Hello everyone. So let's begin for a question for you. Who in the room uh, is already using loving Map Server? Cool, a lot of people. Who is new to Map Server or some people? Okay, that's good. And who is here just to uh, get a country picture and uh, check email? <laughs> okay. Um, so Map Server is great. Uh, we just saw the new features of Map Server. Map Server is great. Map Server is powerful. Map Server is the fastest map rendering engine there is right now on the market. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, map Server is easy to install thanks to Jeff on Windows and uh, thanks to people doing the builds on for Linux. Map Server is easy to configure with a nice human readable configuration file. Well. <laughs> It, it is human readable. Um, and map, map file development uh, is uh, great. It's quite a work, but it's great. Uh, map files are great, powerful. Uh, it's possible to get a really, really beautiful result uh, for, from uh, your map files. Here, is a nice Maps over map with OSM data with a style that replicates uh, Google Maps. Here's the same map with a, a gray shade, so you can put your colorful statistical data above it. Uh, here's nice rasters, uh, a beautiful map. Uh, in, in this case, there's also uh, the um, also ocean. Uh, 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 ocean boundaries, but uh, also oceans. Um, uh, there's a raster data for the oce ocean bathymetry. Thank you. Uh, here's uh, a nice uh, glow. I don't know if you can see it at the back of the room, but there's a nice glow around the Montreal Island. So just to make your features appear more uh, nicely in the map and get out, get your information out <laughs> of it. Yes, that will be in uh, uh, just if, if you want to do all of that, uh, it will help you to use Scribe and Scribe UI. <laughs> it will help you a, a lot, and uh, that's the goal of this uh, presentation. And if you want more detail, I'll be uh, uh, we can fix a, run, uh, a time where we can meet or set up a buff or something. So, map file, they are great, you can do powerful stuff. Uh, with big map file, you can even use include to get uh, to be able to manage all the information because there will be a lot but the thing is that everyone that has developed big map file has gone through a variety of issues uh, there's a lot of copy paste involved uh, when you have multiple da data source that are generalized for multiple level you have to uh, copy paste your layer not anymore in 64 but on all the other version you have to uh, scales are a bit confusing. There is no variable, so you have to copy paste a lot of information all around, and so on. For example, if when you develop map file, you have to have several tools and windows all around. So you need a text editor, your favorite text editor for map file development. You will need a browser to see the result of your changes. You will also need a console open to see your debug output. A uh, file browser or an SQL window so you can test and explore your data. Even QGIS to see your data and attributes. Or o OGR if you're a, a geek like us. Um, and the goal of Scribe and Scribe UI is to make your life and our life easier. To make things easier to manage, easier to develop. So in this talk uh, I will talk about mainly about two things. The first thing is the scribe syntax, which is a way to trim down your work when developing map file. And then I'll talk about scribe UI, which is a nice user interface, a map file editor, and a productivity tool uh, above the map file editing work. And at the end, I will give you some tips and tricks with scribe UI. So scribe UI, scribe UI is there to make things easier for my file developers, by my file developers. So it's free. It, we are not trying to uh, reinvent the wheel. We are not trying to uh, 
replace the map file development. Uh, it's the request or the work that map file developers do day to day that we uh, that uh, are the rec the um, the re requirement for for the tool. Describe syntax first in itself uh, is another an alternative syntax to the map file syntax like XML map file like base map or like any in house format that you have that you store in a database or something. It's still based on the map file syntax, so you have to you have to know the map file syntax to be to be efficient with the scribe syntax. It's just really a Python script uh, that uh, runs and that gives you a, a real map file at the end. Scribe is a way to make map file development more productive by removing a lot of copy pasting. It makes project more manageable, and it does save a lot of time when developing map files. Some details. Uh, what Scribe does, we'll see a, a few examples in the next few slides. What Scribe does is it takes your Scribe configuration and creates a lot of layers. It will create one layer for each zoom level that you have defined. The result will be, will be perfectly indented. You will be able to get comments inside your resulting map file. Uh, it prevents a lot of layer class and style duplication. And it's still based on the map file syntax. So we do not seek to replace map file just to help people that work with them. So the command to run scribe is as simple as python scribe.py. Uh, there's also a bunch of. Uh, uh, options that you, you can pass, but I won't go over, just read the documentation. Uh, the first thing which is great in Scribe is the scales definition. So when you start a project, you define the scales that your map will be used at. And from there on, there will be no more min scale denom and max scale denom keyword anymore. So that's really great. It will give you s things like a data statement here where you just pass the scales, the now zoom level, because you work with the zoom level from there on to match with the, your web application that you're working with. So you define the zoom level that you will work at and each uh, data source that will be used at each zoom level. At the, any keyword can be used with the syntax. So here we uh, redefine the width of a line depending on the zoom level we are at. It's as simple as that. So no more copy paste, you just define which zoom level you want to use with each parameter. You can use either a block or simply define it uh, for a single element. The other great thing, the other marvelous thing, <laughs> are variables. You can now define variables, variables that, I, that are a group um, of instruction or that are simply values. And those variables, you, you can put them inside your scribe syntax. So no more duplication of post disk connection information. Uh, no more duplication of your, w of your most common WMS metadata. Uh, and if you want all your streets or river or oceans to be the same colors, then you define the color once, and you just change it once. No more uh, find and replace of this single color statement. Another thing that, that is really useful is the command blocks. <laughs> if you want, uh, if you already developed with Map Server, uh, or if you're new to it, uh, when you want to comment out a layer, you have to put a little hashtag like that next to every line. So that's a little bit uh, of a pain. So now we inscribe, you will support command block with slash star. Um, and that will uh, put a block of code in comment. If you want to still have comments in your resulting map file from scribe, then you use the double hashtag comment. Uh, and those comments will, uh, will be in the resulting map file. So you can still leave notes for uh, application integrator. 
you can still leave notes to yourself when you will try to debug or change the resulting map file when it's in production or staging in a staging environment. So Scribe, use it. It's really cool. It's, it does save a lot of time. We already have a, a lot of projects that we use it. And it, it's at least twice or, or thrice as fast as a regular map file development. Now, Scribe UI. Like I said, uh, m developing a map file or for map server is great, but it could be easier. Scribe is a good step to make it easier, but now it will be even easier if we add uh, uh, all our tools in the same place, all our small tricks uh, shared together. So Scribe URI is indeed a map file editor, like there was before. There was the I think the two most popular in the past were has been MapLab and Map Storage. There's been a few other as well, but each map file editor eventually uh, died down because. When you have a tool that that is aimed for newbies, those newbies usually don't really contribute to the tool because they are newbies. So Scribe UI is, is indeed a map file editor as well, but it's more than that. It's a tool for the, the power user as well. That's why we hope it will live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> so a basic tour of the Scribe UI uh, interface. Uh, first, we have workspaces. Workspaces are projects. When you create a workspace, you can, you can, or you're, but you're not. Um, it's not mandatory. You can put a password to it, so you can be multiple map file developer working on the same project. Maybe different layers, maybe different scales. A single project can obviously contain multiple maps. Then you can create new maps inside a project. And in Scribe UI, there are small goodies uh, hidden everywhere. Well, not hidden, but everywhere there are small goodies. For example, who in the room, when starting a new project, start the map file from scratch? <laughs> Nobody. That's what I thought. <laughs> Nobody ever does that. So in Scribe UI, we'll, we are well aware of that. So you can copy any map file that you already have as a template for your new project. So you can either define template map file for all of your project or just copy a map file that you had in another project two years ago. That still works. So when creating a new map file, you always copy an existing one. Give it a description, and it will now be available for to, to copy for uh, your next uh, new project. The it now the editor, which is the main block of Scribe UI. Uh, in the editor, we edit layer by group. So when you select a group, you will have all the layers in this group. It's color coded. There's uh, line numbering. Uh, and when you make a mistake in the Scribe syntax, you will also have nice error message that tell you which line, which layer is problematic. Of course, there's a uh, 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 map view of this uh, for the sake of the window screen and the people at the end of the room. I didn't put yet uh, an image of the whole application, but we, we have a demo at the end if time permits. The layer groups. A new layer group can be created, deleted, or you can modify of the order of your layers inside the application. The map definition. One of the other great thing is that we trim down the user interface, so you don't have the map definition at the same place as your layer definition. So it's easy to access if you want to access to modify the, the global map definition. And you can hide it when you're done, so it doesn't take uh, screen, size, uh, screen space. Now. That was the 
the basic introduction to the Scribe UI interface. Now more advanced tools for developers. One of the first and most, most important ones is that inside the UI we added a small block where it, it, your debug output are displayed. So that's the first step towards getting everything together in the same interface so you don't have eight windows open wh while you develop map files. As soon as you pan the map or zoom in, you will get the output there. And at some point, it, it will be cool to have more human readable or trimmed down debug uh, logs. You can also get the resulting map file in another, in another tab. So you can immediately see the result, copy paste it somewhere in another file or whatever. You can also export your whole map file with all the data in a tarball that you will be able to download and install on a production server. There a really, really, really cool tool is the point of interest that we added in Scribe UI. So when developing map file, what we notice is that we are always coming back to the same point. We have two, three, four, ten point of interest that we want to test our change against to see if it's the, the results are good. So we added point of interest, so you can just select them. It, the map will automatically zoom at the right zoom level and the right extent to show you the result where you want to see them. It makes it easy to test several regions when editing styles. Now, Scribe UI in the cloud. Scribe UI is a web interface, a web application, and it, it can be in the cloud or simply install on a server that you share with your coworkers. So it allows to developers to work in groups on, a, on the same project without duplicating the data all over the place. So it removes a lot of headache for the data maintenance uh, so you can work on a centralized system all together on the same project at the same time. And you can password protect your workspace, like I said. So you can, if you want, give access only to a few key developers to a single project or, or to your uh, production version of the application. No more installation puzzle. You install Scrub UI once, and it's available for everyone because it's in the cloud. You can also install Scribe UI only on your machine and work locally. There's no problem with that. But it's a feature that is uh, that we found that was cool because when you're working, when three people are working on the same data set, especially o an, an OSM planet data set, you don't want all of them to install the data on their machine. And to work in the cloud, we also have a browse tab where you can download or upload new data on the server. So you don't have to SSH or SCP your data files on the server, install them on, in the right directory and things like that. You now have a nice uh, plugin here where you can simply upload with a few clicks the, your data file on, on the right, in the right directory on the server. I mentioned plugins. That's because Scribe UI support plugins. The key for this project to work is, of course, people using it, but also make it even better as a productivity tool. So for that, we added plugins, which are small components uh, that developer will be able to use or develop new ones. So we added a few JavaScript functions like the add button or add tab that will be allow you to add components inside the web application. And with you will be able to develop small Python script that will do the server side of your, um, uh, of your plugin. Pl Scribe UI is a Flask application uh, written in Python. And uh, if you're familiar with that, well, each plugin gets their custom root, so you can access the code directly from, from the plugin directory. We hope that 
in the future, there will be a lot of new plugins uh, implemented. We already have plans for some of them, uh, if time permits, obviously. And we hope that uh, other map file developer will identify uh, an area where they need a new tool, develop a new one, and share it with us. So here's uh, the, plugin, the example plugin that we have, the first example plugin that we have in the application is the set extent plugin where you have a small button that you can see on the screen and it will allow you to drag as a nice orange square or rectangle on the map and it will automatically change the extent of your map file instead of trying to write numbers or copy pasting the output of an OGR request or things like that, like we always have done. So you can refer to this plugin to get, an ex to get a code example. It's uh, really simple. And it will show you how to create new plugins if you're interested. <coughs> the plugins that, that are to come will be the, probably the first one will be the color swatch. So you can have a list of predefined co color that you just click. Or if you add a new color, it will add a new square little square in your application that you will be able to click to just identify which color I is going where then i would like to have a map cache conf configuration plugin where you can define your map cache configuration what is on your server and launch and monitor pre-caching jobs again it's to have every tools that we use every day in the same application integrated with each other. So when you create a new map file, you will be able to just click a few buttons and a pre-caching job will be started to generate all the tiles for all the words at all zoom levels on your server. Some other plugins that we talk about, a Git integration, so you can, ca when you save your map, it goes automatically in a, in a Git repository so you can have a source revision control. Data visualization, so you can upload a shapefile and see the attributes. Re human readable output, when I s uh, like I said earlier, sky is the limit, or the imagination and time of the map file developers. N so now some tips and tricks, basics with Scribe UI. You can now, th the first thing is that you can now think of your maps as levels instead of services. Each zoom level can become, can now become a map in itself because you will be able to easily define the width, color, spacing of all your features. And this will allow you to consider your map cartographer or web designer eyes instead of with from the application developer constraints my data are this and that and I have to make uh, the lines blue things like that so it makes things easier and more beautiful for the the end user as well of course variables are the best thing in the world so use them uh, Scribe UI logs will tell you where your syntax error are, so it, it will be easy for you to, to, to know when you have an error. And point of interest are your friends. Use them. So a couple of minutes. Maybe a small demo. So it's installed locally. Hopefully it will work right. So. Here, I, I uh, only have uh, one workspace with the scribe syntax. Of course, scribe UI still works with the regular map file syntax. Here is a map of the world. Scribe UI, when you install it, com can come with a few, two, well, one data set with two ma example map files. So you can start from something instead of nothing. Here we have the regular map file syntax inside a map file. Let's open the scribe map file quickly. Here's the OCHN layer. You can see that I use variables for my classical la layer configuration. 
and some uh, zoom levels because my data is generalized depending on where it is. In the rows layer, they are a little bit more complex. You can see that we have some blocks to define several classes at different scales. And you can also include components that comes from multiple data sources. I here I have defined a layer that comes from PostGIS, that is all the OSM roads in Nottingham. This little button here opens the debug output. So if I pan the map, I should get some, it doesn't, doesn't try, I should get some debug information. Yeah. Yeah, debug information here. Variables available from the click of a button. The map configuration available from the click of a button. And if I make a change to a layer, for example, the I'm not I didn't zoom at the right place. Let's go to Nottingham. Here. So let's change the color. Hopefully I change the right layer. Yay! So that's how scribes work. Scribe UIs work. I would recommend to use scribe, so source control your scribe file. Yes, and if you have a, a file going into, into production, then make sure to source control the production version as well. The resulting, just to have a, so you have a backup of it. No, not yet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, brilliant. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's, it's, uh